Good morning. Hope you are having a good day. My name is Joel Hernandez. I'm commissioner of the commission and I'm here to preside over this hearing in my capacity as country reporter. We are opening hearing uh, for case 14,483, Claudia Andrea Amigo Bravo, Claudia Margarita Calderón Esquivel, and Gabriela Andrea Amigo versus Chile, or against Chile. But before starting the hearing, I would like to introduce those who belong to the delegation of the commission. First, I would like to greet Commissioner Esmerella Rosemena de Troitinio, that is the Rapporteur for Children's Rights, Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, also the Executive Secretary for Cases and Petitions, Marisol Blanchard. First, I would like to give the floor to the Executive Secretary, Marisol Blanchard. Marisol, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, thank you, President, Mr. President. The first case has to do with the alleged violations of human rights due to the lack of recognition of uh, Gabriela Amigo as the daughter of her two mothers, Claudia Amigo and Claudia Calderon. In March 2021, the, the commission notified the parties that it decided to apply Article 36.3 of its rule of of procedures in order to join the stages of admissibility and merits. The hearing is aimed at receiving the statements of the three alleged victims and for the parties to present the allegations of admissibility and on the merits and their reparations measures. President, you have the floor. President, you're on mute. Sorry. First, I would like to explain the methodology of this hearing. This is a hearing that will be conducted in three parts. First, we will listen to the statements of Gabriela Amigo. I would like her to introduce herself. After that, we will have uh, Gabriela's statement after the questions of the petitioner by eight minutes. Then for another eight minutes, the state will ask the questions. And finally, the commission will ask its questions and we will listen to the answers of Gabriela Amigo for 15 minutes. After that, we will listen to a joint declaration of Claudia Amigo and Claudia Calderon. And I will also record her identification data. We will listen to their statements for eight minutes. And after that, we will have the questions by the state and questions from the commission in order then to listen to the answers of the alleged victims. And finally, we will listen to the allegations of the parties. The petitioner will have five minutes and the state will have another five minutes. And finally, we will have some possible questions made by the commission and we will listen to the final comments of each of the parties. Because of time restrictions, this last section could last up to 15 minutes. Having said this, let's begin with the first part of the hearing. I beg Gabriela Amigo to introduce herself by saying her full name, place of birth, and place of residence. Sorry, Commissioner Hernandez. Can I have a second before starting uh, the statement of Gabriela Amigo? I can hear you. Let me know. Sorry for interrupting. Before starting with the questionnaire or the questioning, the representatives of the state wouldn't like to know how the statements will be received, if they will be listened one after the other, 
as it mentioned in the document. And if we will have eight minutes for asking questions to each of the alleged victims. Sorry for the sound. I would like to ask the executive secretary for petition and cases if she could help me with the answer. Yes, effectively. You have eight minutes to ask questions, as Commissioner Hernandez has just said, for each of the alleged victims. The first statement will be of Gabriel Amigo for eight minutes, and then we will have the alleged declaration of Claudia Amigo and Claudia Calderon. And the statements will be heard separately or one after the other. We will have two parts. First, Gabriel Amigo, and then in a joint statement, we will have Claudia Amigo and Claudia Calderon. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. If there are no other questions at the beginning of this hearing, I would like to ask Gabriel Amigo to take the floor and to say his her full name, her place of birth, and her place of residence. My name is Gabriela Amigo. Amigo Calderón, I was born in Santiago, Chile, and I live in Santiago as well. I would like for you to present your statement for the next eight minutes. Yeah. You can start. Sorry, I, we have a question. We received a document by the Inter-American Commission that indicated that each statement or intervention was conducted through questions. But uh, we are shocked that Gabriela has to speak directly. But if you are agree to speak directly, it's OK. You can go ahead, Gabriela. I think that the commissioner wants to say something. Madam, uh, Mr. President, could you ask the secretary to give Gabriela the possibility of stating her ideas on the matter in a free way without any limitation? Thank you. Yes, that is my invitation. Um, Mr. President, I'm afraid that there is a little confusion. We are here to ask questions, notwithstanding the fact that it, there is no problem if the hearing starts with a statement. But I think that in order to order things, Catalina Polo can ask some questions, but we can start with a, uh, Gabriela's free statement first. So I would like Gabriel Amigo to speak freely for eight minutes. And after those eight minutes, the petitioner can ask questions. To start with, my family is made up of two moms. And from the very beginning, the state did not recognize them as my two moms. And even though they did not recognize, for me, they are my two moms. And this has affected me, for example, when any proceeding or procedure that I have to do, for example, if I need a school pass, we need, if we have to request a permit, I, we need to request the permit of my biological mom so that my foster man can go with me for example, in hospitals or in the emergency room, only one mom can be with me. And to be honest, I have had no social problems, but it hurts that my family is not being recognized as such. And that we are discriminated from since when I was born. Because since I since I was a very little kid, I've been with both of them. So that's it. 
Muy bien, muchas gracias. Thank you. Gabriela, now I would like to give the floor to lawyer Cristian Riero Ramírez. Catalina Polo will speak on my behalf. Good morning. First, I would like to greet the distinguished commissioners and the representation of the state. And I have some questions for Gabriela. Gabriela, can you describe uh, the composition of your family in detail? Adelante, Claudia. Go ahead, Claudia. My, the composition of my family is my mom, mom, my other mom, and myself. And then I have my grandparents, my uncles, my aunts, uh, my cousins. That's it. How is the dynamics within your family? How is your family life? Well, my family life is not extraordinary at all. I don't know how to explain this. We share the course. They help me with homework. They are. They care that I'm okay, and that's it. What's the role? that Claudia Calderón has in your life as your mom? What do you share? What are the things that you have in common? She is present in my school life. Sometimes when I don't feel good emotionally, she supports me. We share the fact that we both love playing football or soccer when I was younger. So that's it. You mentioned the problems with the school pass or when you have to go to the doctor or to a hospital. What do you think about the effects that these challenges have had on your life. How do you deal with this? I don't know what to say because after such a long time, I am used to it, this. I'm no longer surprised. I don't believe that things will change. But every day I know that things won't change. It is what it is. So those are the questions that we have. Thank you, Gabriela. Thank you, Gabriela. Now I would like to give the floor to the representation of the state to ask questions to Gabriela. No to Claudia Andrea, to Gabriela. To Gabriela Andrea. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. We would like to thank uh, Gabriela for her statement. We have paid attention to her. The state recognizes the right to actively participate in everything according to international standards. Notwithstanding the fact the state of Chile will not ask questions to Gabriela. Thank you. Now I would like uh, my colleagues for, from the Inter-American Commission, Commissioner Arosemena would like to take the floor first. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to greet everybody first, the representation of the petitioners of the hearing and also the representatives of the state for giving us the opportunity to have this direct communication with Gabriel Andrea. 
Gabriela. I know that you're a little nervous and that's natural, that's normal. It's what happens in these situations. But you were saying something that for me, it's fundamental. What I want is that socially, in your country, in your neighborhood, in your community, in your school, the family relationship of your life is accepted. Your relationship with your two mothers is accepted. So when you say, I'm just like used to this socially, what does it mean for you? for that relationship to be accepted, to be recognized. How, what, uh, how would you consider that that relationship would be accepted socially in the community where you live, etc.? That is my question. Socially, since this has never been weird, I feel comfortable when people respect how my family is composed. And when I was a girl, uh, my friends learned this. Uh, there was not information at the time. I feel socially accepted. At the social level, I feel that I am accepted and that my family is accepted. So basically that's it. So that's all, Mr. President. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to Commissioner May Macaulay. She if you would like to make any questions to Gabriela Andrea Amigo. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I, I just want to do a follow-up question to my sister Esmeralda's question. And um, hello, Gabriela. Um, nice to meet you. And I hope we can resolve what is happening um, for your family. Um, my, uh, you, you said that you feel comfortable when people accept your family. And um, this is what you know, you know, you're comfortable with it and so on. Do you understand about the position of the state, the state of Chile in, in, in relation to your family, how your family is made up of two moms and yourself? Do you understand what the state has decided about that? You understand what the state has said about your family? What? Yes, I understand what the state thinks. And how does that make you feel? And when, when, at what age did you realize what the state has said about your family? The translation is not good for them. Margaret, they are translating again consecutively. That's okay. why I was not repeating. Okay. Before continuing, I would like to ask Gabriela, have you activated or enabled the simultaneous interpretation feature on Zoom? Because you have a world there, you have a world icon or a globe icon, and you can click there so that you receive directly the questions of Commissioner May Macaulay. So, uh, it's going, it's a little slowly, so that's why. Uh, uh, do you remember how old you are when you found out how the state, what the state says about your family, your two moms and yourself? Mm. And how you from, since always, since feel? I was born or since I met Claudia? Mm -hmm. um, well, you tell me. 
that feel makes me feel very unpowerful. I feel anger and I don't trust the state anymore. I feel powerless. But within yourself, in your family unit, you are happy with your moms, your two moms. Yes. And you would like the state to accept your family as you are. Yes. Thank you, Gabriela. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Gracias. Gracias, Comisionada. Bueno, voy a hacerle algunas preguntas a Gabriela. En primer lugar, eh, la saludo. Le agradezco. Thank you, Commissioner. I will make some questions to Gabriela. I would like to greet her first, and I would like to ask her. How is your everyday life with your relatives in general? Not only your mothers, but your grandparents, uh, your uncles, aunts, whether you feel integrated to your circle. Well, my grandparents are, and some of my aunts and uncles are outside Chile on, on, on the part of Claudia Calderón. I have some grandparents and some aunts and uncles here and everything's Okay, I have a good relationship with them, but it's a normal relationship. And do you know some other girls of boy your age that have uh, parents of two uh, families of two fathers or two mothers? Yes, some of them, but it's not something that matters to us because it's something normal for the rest. And these girls or boys that also have or homoparental families that are, re are integrated to their families like you. Yes, uh, at least that's information I have socially, yes. So what is it that you are missing in order to have an everyday life in the same conditions as the rest of your friends or the rest of your the boys or girls. Well, I need I need my mother to be able to take me to the emergency room if my my biological ma mother is not able to because if I go with her they will tell me that I have to go with my biological mom. And those are the things that damage me. The fact that my mother, uh, foster mother is not recognized with because I have sometimes to do several proceedings at school or that sort of things. In the school, have you been limited because of that reason? Because of not being recognized? Not a lot because This has not posed any problems up to now, but in the rest of the aspects or scopes, yes. And do you feel discriminated against in front of the rest or com when compared to the rest of your friends or your neighbors? No. Okay, thank you. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much, Gabriela, for being here with us. Now I will pass on to having the joint statement of Claudia Amigo and Claudia Calderon. I will ask each of them, I will ask them to introduce themselves, giving their full name, their place of birth and place of residence. Who would like to start? Good morning. My name is Claudia Margarita Calderon Esquivel. I was born in Santiago de Chile and I live in Santiago de Chile as well. Good morning. 
Greetings to all the people present. I am Claudia Andrea Amigo Bravo. I was born in Santiago and I also live in Santiago. Okay, thank you very much. Now we're going to have your statements. Before giving the floor to your representatives so that they can ask you questions, I will ask you whether you want to make some initial, some sort of initial declaration. Well, yes, I do. We would like to thank as a family the fact that the commission has taken time to hear us. This is a situation that is a little bit uncomfortable and that places an emotional burden upon us. We are people, we must have the, the same rights, the three of us as any other families, but we do not have those rights. So in order to protect our daughter, we had to get to these instances. And these had been long years. It has been since Gavi is three years old, we have lived this discrimination by the state. When she says that she's not discriminated by her friends at school, it's true, she isn't. And she hasn't been discriminated against by their teachers. She has not been discriminated against by the people that love her, that know her, and that support her. But that doesn't happen within the legal arena. So when, I, when Gavi speaks about the hospital, it happened twice. It already happens twice. We had to take her because we had an emergency when she was four years old. And she and her other mother was mistreated and she was not allowed in. And there was another instance in which we also had to go to a hospital and we couldn't enter as the rest of the families. And Gabriela saw at that time that heterosexual parents could go, could uh, go with their children, but she couldn't. And these things shouldn't happen and in a state where we have a resolution that we are all free and equal and we have the same rights. That's not true because the children of families such as ours are not the same, are not equal in the eyes of this country. They are not treated as people who deserve the same rights. There is a distinction made and knowingly that this shouldn't be done and we have done all at our at our reach for the love we have for Gabriela to eliminate this discrimination but unfortunately nobody has listened to us nobody gave us the opportunity to present our case before the court tribunal we didn't even had that opportunity so if co-maternity doesn't exist in Chile, why are we seeing lots of people who are trying to judicialize their cases and they are looking for the same thing, they're trying to protect their children. We are doing what is natural for any parent to protect our daughter, but the one who is denying that possibility is our country, our state is denying the possibility to protect our love and respect for Gabriela, who is the one who we love the most. So we really thank you for this opportunity. It's really important for us. I hope this had been different. I hope we didn't have to be here, but we are here, unfortunately. And we wait and we hope that the commission and the state respect Respect us, stop doing away with the rights of our children, of our daughters, stop evading her, stop overlooking her. As a family, with together with other feminist and les lesbian collectives have fought for a bill that wants to extend the current rights of uh, children, of other uh, parents, to Gabriela as well, and all children that are uh, offsprings of, pe of people that are not composed by two, one mother and one father, they are composed by um, lesbian uh, parents because she is denied her 
affiliation rights because of our sexual orientation. It's that simple and it's very painful. So if the society, if children, if their friends, if neighbors, if, if teachers can respect her, it's because we want her to respect her. But when are we going to have a state that can respect us as well, that can recognize that Gabriela exists? And that's our primary concern, recognizing that she does exist and respecting her as well with the same dignity for those children that come from families that are made up of a father and a mother, we would like to extend the same kind of respect to her without questionings, without ideologies, without uh, religious views, without views that discriminate against her. But thinking of the best interest of Gabriela, not from an ideology or the protection of a family. Our family lives and our family deserves the same considerations and the same respect as the rest. Enough, enough of discrimination against Gabriela and against all the children of families that are not made up of a mother and a father. Thank you. I will give the floor to the representatives of the petitioners. We still have two minutes. A greeting to all the people present. Could you tell us when and how your relationship started? Well, it started in, 20, in 2007, specifically November 2nd, 2007, when Gabriela was three years old. This question is addressed to Claudia Calderón. What did it mean for you that the state of Chile that this don't recognize your, your role as mother and what impacts did it have in your life? It has been terrible. There, those had been very difficult, complex years because I met all the requirements or all the, the tasks as that are requested of me as a mother, I try to do everything. I cannot protect her as I really would like to. And that has been very wearing and emotionally wearing as well. It has been difficult, very difficult. Um, to both of them as activists, for the recognition of left lesbo maternal families. How do you see the lesbian maternal families and how do you see this bill and um, whether you think that a solution is going to be granted to you? Well, unfortunately it has been very difficult with each change of administration, we haven't been heard with the exception of some senators that really tried to file a affiliation bill and with other organizations and us we are our we are we have our own organization we thought okay well this is going to be solved because that right is denied to us to have access to at least some kind of recognition, to something, some basic, such as extending the rights in an article that speaks about mm, uh, treatments that are to that are allowed for women and men. Well, we we were denied that possibility. When we, we when we when we went to talk to Congress, it was also very difficult because at that time the adoption was being analyzed, not this type of affiliation. At that time, it was quite difficult to hear from a deputy or a senator from Chile Vamos who told us before Gabriela that Claudia is not her mother. And all the, and nobody said anything about that. When it has been five years since we introduced our bill that tries to regulate affiliation independently of their status, the status of their parents. 
what happens is that the representative of the executive branch of the president comes we have exhausted the time so I, I will I will ask you to conclude yes we see it's difficult we see that there is no political willingness that can address this issue immediately and we cannot see that this will be solved before Gavi turns 18 it's just eight years so it's one year because she will become 17 this year but it's difficult but we are going to keep on fighting for that well thank you this part took us 10 minutes I will give the representation for the formulation of questions. So I will give the floor to the state. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. We would like to thank the statement of the alleged victims. We have listened to them. Now I would like to give the floor to a lawyer, Constanza Richard, who works in the Undersecretariat of Human Rights of Chile to ask the questions to the petitioners. Thank you, Ambassador. Good morning to the representatives of the Commission and to the petitioners, especially to Gabriela and her moms. I understand that this is a joint statement, so I would like to openly ask this question to uh, Claudia Margarita or to Claudia Andrea. And, and la I recall that in your recent statements, you just said that you don't have the opportunity to present your case before family courts. I would like to know if you are aware of the fact that the judgment of the Supreme Court says that the request or the application you presented is not the right action to a state filiation or to confirm filiation. And the same judgment says that the right uh, remedy should be the filiation action. So I would like to know why you don't file a filiation action before the family courts. I would like to object that question because that is a legal discussion. And it should be conducted between lawyers. There are a lot of things that should be said in this respect. But I think it would be uh, take advantage uh, by asking legal questions to a person that is not a lawyer. Both parties could present in written your, their allegations. This is simply a hearing to collect information I encourage Claudia, Amigo and Claudia Calderon to answer the question of Constanza Richards uh, within their, what they know. Commissioner, I could simplify the question by saying, or, because I would like to know if they are aware that they I still have the option to file a affiliation action before family courts. Claudia, Claudia Amigo. You can go ahead, Claudia Amigo or Claudia Calderon. Yes, in 2015, in March 2015, we, we filed this petition. We did so with the UDP, and we decided to file this in this way because in the region of Las Lagos, uh, there were two cases of three children whose two mothers were recognized or their affiliation was recognized. So there was a proceeding in which a judge recognized double mothers for three children with two mothers and a father based on Convention 169 of original or of indigenous peoples. And therefore, we trust on uh, the teams of lawyers who have represented us for the over all these years. So that's why we decided to present this judgment and ask the justice system why in Chile, in the region of Los Lagos, 
two mothers and a father are recognized or their affiliation is recognized for those three children and why are our case is not taken into consideration and the answer is because it's well because we are lesbian and that judgment was declared inadmissible and i think that this is something that you should be asking yourselves in your cards that is what i would like to understand why you are not protecting my daughter my question was that the reason to declare the judgment inadmissible is because the application or the request you presented was not correct, was not right. There are other cases in which uh, the victims presented affiliation action and that affiliation has been recognized. So my question was simply if you knew that you still can file affiliation action before the family courts which is an expedite process before going to the international courts. But not all realities are the same. Not all families are the same. In our case, we are in um, composed family. We, I, Dear, I decided first to be a single mom, and then I met Claudia. But what I'm requesting the state is that since Claudia has been Gabriela's mother for five, for more than five years, I'm requesting the affiliation because that is what they would do with heterogeneous families. But this is a different reality, the one that we have here. We don't have the same reality as other families. Sorry to interrupt you, but I would like to ask you another question. You were talking about the bills and the legal changes. Do you know that recently there has been an urgent discussion regarding the bill that regulates same-sex marriage this has led to a lot of discussions and we are seeing that the bill is progressing in the Senate of the country. Do you know this? And if that bill is passed, that would allow for the adoption for same-sex marriage. If it's passed as it is, it's going to be without affiliation. So it would not apply to our reality. Our Affiliation will not be recognized. Their voluntary recognition of affiliation has been removed. So through same-sex marriage, it will not be possible to establish the affiliation relationship. In other countries, you talk about voluntary affiliation or voluntary recognition of affiliation, but in, in other countries is there, but not in the bill for Chile. However, the bill regarding affiliation rights is there, is not progressing, it's just there, it's stuck. I just want to understand what you are talking about. As um, spouses in a single, in a same sex marriage, the persons of the marriage taken into consideration the current legislation and future legislation, the spouses are in a privileged situation to request adoption. And the bill for same-sex marriage establishes that persons that get married uh, have the status of spouses, and you would be in a privileged position for adoption. But I don't understand you well, because in your case, you are not married if the law is passed. I just want to clarify because the petition is, or the petition for adoption is allowed for married couples because it's not about affiliation, it's about the privileged position to request adoption. No, it does not apply to our case. And it's not 
applicable for many couples that are just um, uh, families that include uh, many members. So, and this ad adoption is still a problem and the discussion on affiliation has been also a problem. Unfortunately, this has not been considered or the best interest of the child has not been prioritized. The views of the adults that are legislated in the country is that is a priority. And the bill as it's being passed right now would only recognize children depending on how they are conceived. So depending on conceptions, that is the affiliation relationships that will be recognized. So those persons that uh, conduct a fertilization process together um, could request the affiliation, but it's not the same in our case. Now we have a bill that affects, that does not include Gabriela and many other children. Thank you. We have finished this part with two additional minutes. So now I would like to ask a question. I would like to ask my colleagues, Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena, and if she has any other questions for uh, Claudia Amigo or Claudia Calderón. I, I couldn't find the button, sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, I have a question for the Claudias. You have posed a situation that speaks about the complexity that this recognition of rights implies in conditions of real equality, of non-discrimination, of respect, respect towards your rights. And when we speak about regulation, I think it's a very important aspect at this time. Have you had the opportunity so that in this discussion process, in parliament, in the assembly, I don't know what how you call the parliament, you throughout your organizations have had the opportunity to give those um, accurate facts that warrant your equality that even though it, the regulation is important i think that enables or that makes this process easy those processes in which they are claiming for equal treatment. So having the possibility that in these processes, legislative processes, you intervene so as to pose these points of conflict that the reality of each of the diversities or the diverse families can face. Have you had this opportunity through your representatives as organizations that you, the, the organizations that you have? Because for me, it's very important this legislative moment. I don't want a situation to exclude any type of family so as to make this concept of equal, of real equality be, uh, and not uh, and of non-discrimination. Yes, we have had the opportunity to expose our reality in Congresses. In it's, uh, It has been years of sessions, of struggles. And what is it that I received? Well, I received bad treatment on the part of people, of right-wing people who have treated me, who have said me that I'm not your, a deputy told, told me, you are not your, the, Gabriela's mom. Gabriela's father is a, the, the sperm that, that made her born. That is 
not just it's not fair for her we have had the opportunity to be heard but that is how and that is one of the experiences that we have had and we, yeah we have posed the different ways of family composition in the bill that we presented that doesn't have to do with same-sex marriage because it comprehends the three types of filiations that today are recognized for heterosexual for parents. We presented the idea of extending the same rights to um, assisted uh, re reproduction. We posed this idea in 2016. Unfortunately, it was not well received or positively this received that process that bill has been sleeping there in the senate but some weeks ago we had a little bit more support by the senators in the committee so as to work in uh, in favor of the affiliation of children now it was it has happened recently after long years of having been struggling so these have to be seen from the point of view of the rights of children and adolescents and if not they are going to leave aside children such as gabriela or other children that come from same sex uh, uh, couples and we would like to thank you for the time you granted us so as to focus on the right of children and to forget forget the differences because adult centrism has uh, poses this situation thank you i will ask commissioner arosemena whether she has another question no okay Thank you. I will give the floor now to Commissioner Margaret Macaulay, whether you want to make any question to the mothers. Thank you, Ms. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. I, I wanted to make sure that I have um, uh, the two moms position quite clear. Um, I understand you, Claudia and Claudia, to be saying that the major interest you have is to protect your child, Gabby, and that her best interest is the paramount interest which you have in the matter. Um, but I also understand you in dealing with the family issue to say that it is an accepted norm of international human rights law that children are entitled and it is their right to be with and have their family. And um, so that will be part of her best interest that her family be recognized in every way and manner as a family in law, in social gatherings and so on. This is what I understand your position to be. Am I correct? Yes. Yes, we fully understand the fact that our yes. daughter has to be. Yes. Uh, yes, we fully understand that. Okay. Sorry, um, I interrupt you. You have to answer in Spanish because there is translation for the commissioner. Yes, we do understand that the recognition of filiation of Gabriela's filiation is what we real what brings us here and why we are we have been struggling for a long time. It's very important for all children to have the same recognition and not to be denied their right, their natural right based on international treaties and the convention of the rights of the children. Every right reserves, deserves family identity. They also deserve their families to be recognized and know the family that the state decides to protect or not. Our daughter has to have the same dignity. Yeah, I, 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 I'm pleased I have that right. 
do you are you a, I'm sure your uh, legal representatives might have spoken to you about uh, uh, part of the decision of the Inter-American Court on Human Rights. Um, um, when I was a judge of the court, we decided that states must recognize the fact that there isn't only one kind of family confined to mother, father, child, and children. That there are many diverse families, as my sister Esmeralda has mentioned, and, and the ideal is for all these families to be recognized as family, as long as the work in the interest of the children or within those families, uh, uh, and their best interests. And um, that case um, was decided when we were dealing with the in vitro fertilization case versus Costa Rica. If my memory serves me right, I, I was a judge in the court many years ago. Um, I left in 2012. So is this, is there no procedure in the laws of, of Chile as all the years you have been trying, wherein you could have argued that point that our family does not fall within the historical description of family, but it is a family. And, and the court has decided, the Inter-American court has decided and international uh, um, um, mechanisms have also decided this fact that families can be made up of different persons and still be a family. H have you been able to argue that? Um, lamentablemente, unfortunately, we tried that, but we, we tried to bring this case to court with a petition before the family court. Unfortunately, it was inadmissible. So the same day that the petition entered the family court, that same day, we were told no. The doors were closed. We appeal, We went to the courts of appeal. The courts of appeals also closed their doors. We went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court, because of a technical aspect, also decided to close our doors, close the doors to our family and to our daughter. We were not heard. We could not say that our family also deserves the same filiation rights. We were not heard. And that is why with our representatives from the I clinic from the University of Diego Portales, we presented or we filed this petition until the uh, before the commission. Because in Chile, the children of diverse families are not heard and our family is not heard as well. So it's important to have a reparation. It's important to solve this problem. Thank you very much, Mr. Biden. Thank you very much, Claudia and Claudia. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to ask questions separately to Claudia Amigo and Claudia Calderon. The first question has to do with the remedies that you have, uh, that you, Claudia Amigo, have fi had, has filed. You have already explained the proceeding for which you've reached the Supreme Court. But I, I would like to have more clarity and I would like you to tell me how you assess the decisions of the, um, of the courts in your country. Well, I think they are biased. They are biased and it's an hetero cis patriarchal bias because it goes against women, but there is also a bias against co 
lesbian maternity. I think that we are have been discriminated against because we are lesbian mothers. There is no another reason because we have taken care of, we love, we protect Gabriela and how we feel as to have the doors closed and not being given access to justice is like saying to us that we do not exist, that the value of our family is not equal to that of a hetero parental family. Because if Claudia had been a father in 2007, she could have recognized, voluntarily recognized without any questioning administratively in the civil registry, she could have recognize Gabriela, but she is not a man. She is a lesbian mother. I have other questions, but we are uh, running out of time. So I would like I ask you to go to be brief. Which added value would be if your, if your daughter could have the surname Calderon? What added value? I think that is the recognition that I am her mother. I would like the recognition of the relationship that she and I feel or have felt since we met each other. And therefore I would like to have security to that guarantee that I could protect her, that, my, that, he, that she inherits my goods in the future, that I can, uh, protect her health, all the rights that she has and that any child has with uh, because of her parents. Thank you. We have exhausted the time. So we will continue with the final part of this hearing that has to do with the allegations. And for this part, each petitioner will have five minutes for their final allegations. And then I would like to give the floor to the state for another five minutes. And after that, the commission will be able to ask questions to both parties. So now I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the petitioners so they can take the floor for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. I think that given the terms and the things that have been discussed, it is necessary to clarify before the commission the situation in Chilean law and the actions that we have tried. In the legal system of Chile, uh, in a similar situation to that led by Claudia Calderon and Claudia Migo, if the couple was a heterosexual couple, uh, the person that uh, becomes member of a single mother and her child can recognize the child without the need of having a genetic test or that father could have adopted the, uh, the child that is regulated in our legislation and the problem would be over. But the fact that Claudia Calderon was not able to do so is because she is a woman and this is a couple of lesbian women. Due to this situation, they try to file an action that had a specific precedent in an indigenous peoples that is an old rule of the 19th century and that was thought, for example, when a parent has a natural child that treats as a son or a child after the death of the parent, that son or that child or that daughter could claim the affiliation by proving that that parent treated the child as a son or a daughter for a number of years. So they decided to resort that rule that belonged to indigenous peoples to this situation because there was no legal situation for their situation. There was no legal solution for their situation. But the courts did not allow us to discuss this option. That happened in the lower court, then happened at the Court of Appeals, and in the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court didn't say that 
uh, the couple or the Claudias could request a paternity or affiliation action. They say that the affiliation action is the right action, but they also say that that action is regulated by law and that in this case, the law does not recognize affiliation to a mother in a lesbian couple. And therefore it would be necessary to change the legislation so that the law recognizes the affiliation action for a couple of lesbian. The Supreme Court said we need to, they need to use a affiliation action. But we need also to say that two justices of the court voted in favor of the solution of using the rule of for indigenous people for the solution of the problem. And three justices were against that possibility. But what they are saying, that what the state is saying that the petitioners just use the wrong action or the wrong remedy, that is incorrect. In recent years, the state is saying that there is a possible path based on case law in which family courts are recognizing filiation actions by homoparental couples. That is partially correct. We decided to file two actions, and those two actions are we filed, and there are only two precedents to those cases, are different. Those actions that are in the case law are because there has been an, a fertilization procedure, and this did not happen in the situation of the Claudias. There is a new law that establishes that when there is fertilization, uh, the man and the woman who participated in the fertilization process will be recognized as parents. But what we are seeing is that this law creates a void because only talks about man and woman. But what happens with lesbian couples? Because there is a legal void and therefore the judge should supplement the law because this is not being regulated. And according to the interpretation of laws, they could do an interpretation or the judge could do an interpretation by analogy. But this is not the case of the Claudias because they didn't do a fertilization procedure while they were partners. So this option is not available for them. It is not true that today there is a solution and there was no solution in the past. So basically, that is what I wanted to clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the representation of the state for five minutes. Thank you, Commissioner. Now I would like to give the floor to lawyer Oliver Lopez, that is uh, of the Secretariat of Human Rights of the Foreign Mon Ministry of Chile. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. I would like to greet also Claudia Amigo, Claudia Calderón and Gabriela Amiga. Amigo. In my brief presentation, the state will cover two aspects that we believe that are important and that the commission should take into consideration regarding the admissibility of the case that we are discussing. First, the state believes that this case should be considered inadmissible since the petitioner used a remedy that was not correct to resolve the problem as it was uh, presented by the state in June this year. The case taken into consideration convention 169 of the ILO is not similar because it includes a cultural aspect that does not apply to the object and the reality of the instant case. Therefore, the international responsibility of the state is not compromised since the domestic courts have not had the opportunity to pronounce for the case based on the available legal pathways that exist. 
and therefore the state considers that the legal vehicle to uh, present a claim within the legal system of Chile is the affiliation action under the civil code of procedure. As mm, all the courts that participated at the domestic level have said, and also we have the judgment of the Supreme Court that says that the action that they presented does not allow to determine the affiliation of the child. In the Chilean legal system, there is a nominated action that should is an affiliation action that should be filed by the petitioner who have not filed such remedy so far. And they use uh, the record of five years of care, but that is not enough. However, the affiliation action is still available and therefore the commission should not admit this case based on the principle of subsidiarity that applies in the Inter American system. If there was an exhaustion of domestic remedies, the error or the legal error could not be a reason for the commission to uh, cover the present case because the petitioners are trying to revert a decision made by the courts of the states, especially everything that has to do with the right to fair trial, because they just didn't find a favorable solution in domestic trials. So we request the commission not to become a fourth instance tri tribunal in this case. Also, as has been said at this hearing, we see that there has been a progress in the legislation of, Le of Chile, and this would help resolve the situation. In June, uh, since June, the Senate is discussing the bill for same-sex marriage. And according to this, these spouses or the partners become spouses. And this allows them, according to the current legislation regarding adoption and the law regarding the adoption system of Chile and its reform, that every person that is a spouse has a privileged situation or is in a privileged position to adopt. And also the bill presented by the petitioners that they mentioned in this hearing does not help solve the problem we are discussing here. So we would like to give the opportunity to ask any questions to the delegation of the state in this hearing. So due to the above mentioned aspects, the state request the commission to declare the case inadmissible. And the state will present this uh, in the petition for information or in the request of information presented by the commission. We are at your disposal. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are no other interventions on the part of the state. No? Great. Thank you for using the time effectively. Now I would like to give the floor back to my colleagues. First to Commissioner Arosemena. We have 15 minutes to ask questions to the petitioners and to the state. Commissioner Arosemena, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. This time I just want to express Claudia Amigo and Claudia Calderón and Gabriel Amigo. I want to show, to express them my recognition for their fight, for their struggle, for their commitment to equality, because this affects them directly. To me, it is very important that this proceeding of affiliation is solved. Claudia and the other Claudia talked about the best interest of children, the right to have a family, the right to live in a family. And that is the right of a child. This is the right of a, a girl, boy, or adolescent. So the proceeding affiliation 
is necessary because even though you are saying that the same sex marriage will give them the possibility of adopting Gabriela with priority, it's not enough. The problem is that Gabriela is turning 17 and she has lived all her life in this situation of being a member of a family. But the country where she lives is, does not recognize her family as such. So that's the principal affiliation. Family proceedings, and you know this very well, the state of Chile, in order to recognize divorce, took many years. It took many years to accept the possibility of divorce. So family law in our countries underwent a very long process to adapt to the principles of equality and non-discrimination. Women have experienced this in their search for equality. We are seeing this in this relationship of men and women. And now the struggle is to guarantee diversity in families, to, to accept these relationships that are different from uh, our historical culture when relationships were thought as of men and women. But now, filiation should be addressed by the state based on these principles in order to guarantee a true equality. So I am a little concerned about the request of the state in terms of requesting us not to admit the case. Here we are not expressing our opinion, but I would like to say that the commission values these fundamental principles and the best interests of the child. I'm the reporter for, the, for children's rights. And I would like to base my opinion on the best interest of the child principle. And we should interpret this principle. There are several experts from Chile who have been able to study these principles. I have been able to speak to them or to talk to them. And I know this. And in order to translate or to put into practice the best interest of child principle, they should to interpret this. And when building a law, this principle should prevail. The right to family, the right to live in a family and to have a family is part of the best interest of the child. So as a final, that is are my final comments. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to Commissioner May McCauley if she would like to make any questions to the parties. Yes, indeed, Mr. President, thank you very much. Um, I have listened avidly to the state's um, submissions. I am not convinced in my mind about the provisions of the law which deals with affiliation uh, proceedings. And um, in fact, I do not feel confident that it will succeed in the particular circumstance of this family. Uh, um, um, perhaps you could send us the provisions of that, of the law, which deals with such applications so that we can be able to assess this. Um, I am concerned about the two moms and also about Gabby. But Gabby falls more within the mandate of my sister Esmeralda. 
um, but she is a, a woman approaching womanhood. But the two Gabbies are women. And it seems to me from their experiences that uh, they, there has been and the, in, in proceedings and the results of proceedings and their inability to really pursue their, their, their applications as fully as they could have, um, gender discrimination. And gender discrimination based on their sexual orientation. And I say this because of the Atala case also, which I sat on as a judge of the court, which came from Chile, of course. And you will remember that the decisions of every court in Chile that that matter went through found against Judge Atala, except for one. And the particular judge who found in her favor had difficulties and was removed. That is a case which demonstrated a systematic existence of discrimination against lesbians in the judiciary of Chile at the time. I am not saying that this is the case now, but clearly there would be remnants of it because it was systematic. So we need as the commission to really meet our, our responsibility towards all parties, the state and the two moms and Gabby. We need to examine all these and, and see what the actual position is. And um, I want to ask the state a question. Do you have a process wherein two persons, one like, like in the situation here, one, one uh, mom is not related to the child by blood. Do you have a, a procedure in Chile wherein that mom, that parent, can be granted an order for the custody of that child and custody in its widest legal sense and also be ordered to exercise care and control of that child? Do you have that procedure in Chile? And please do not forget to send us the law which relates to the affiliation proceedings in the fa your family courts. Thank you. Gracias, gracias. Voy a ser muy concreto. Voy a hacer una pregunta. Cada... Thank you. I'm going to be very concrete, very brief. I'm going to make one question for each of the parties, and this will also be related to the effective remedy. And first, I would like to ask the petitioners why you decided to uh, have the figure of possession so as to recognize a, ma a biological mother and the foster one. And aligned to Commissioner Macaulay, I would like to ask the states whether there are precedents in which through the filiation action, there ha they have considered father or mother to a homoparental couple in a similar situation to which the Claudias are present here. So we have six minutes. I will give the floor during three minutes for each of the parties without prejudice to then receiving comments by writing. The petitioner has the floor now. Thank you, Mr. President. In Chile, the situations in which a person can have an, ex, an affiliation action are very determinate, very specific. The law is really strict in determining this, and there is no possibility for a mother of a lesbian couple can claim the uh, 
paternity, maternity as to that children. So uh, this possibility didn't exist of going through this avenue, which is uh, the regular one to claim the affiliation. This formula had been used to recognize a situation that is uh, proper to the indigenous world. So we decided to go through that avenue, through that legal, legal avenue. It was a difficult possibility because it required a creative construal of the law, but we got two votes. Just one decided against this action. And as to the second part, I would like to reaffirm that the recognition hypothesis of lesbian maternity that exists are only referred to the use of uh, assisted fertilization. And when the couple together went to a proceeding of a process of fertilization, and then that formula can be applied, but not in the case of my representative that are an assembled family. Thank you. I will give the floor to the state, the representation of the state. Thank you, Commissioner. The state has knowledge of a case to which the petitioners has made reference. The state in, in Chile, this, the, the judgments are relative. So the declaration of filiation The state has not had the opportunity to pronounce on that on the affiliation because the petitioners did, did opted for another avenue as legal strategy. But we have the precedents. We can send you the the this policy, the provisions that the commissioner requests, and we can grow them on these issues as well. Okay, thank you. I thank you really, truly for both parties for having uh, for having come to this hearing, which has been held in a very soft way and according to the, in a very smooth way, sorry, according to the program. And so we could carry out this hearing during this period of session. Uh, commissioner, there is another person from the delegation of the state that would like to give the floor. Sorry, sorry for not giving the floor to them. Uh, we still have a few minutes and then I will close up the meeting. So two more minutes for the representation of the state. Maya is there. I cannot see her. I cannot see him. Mario, good afternoon. I would just like to illustrate the progress of certain legislative conversations that the Chilean administration is having I would like to first say that the Chilean government has been fostering a bill that modifies law 20,609, which perfects the law of non-discrimination so as to include the sexual orientation category. It's a bill that it's in the Senate in Chile and that has been uh, put in the table for the discussion by this uh, chamber this next Wednesday. This project, this bill has been fostered by the Chilean state through the Secretary of Human Rights. On the second hand, I would like to say that the bill to which the petitioners were referring, which is affiliation project, the affiliation bill, the Chilean state was consulted. And in that conversation, the Chilean state 
expressed that this project was incomplete. This bill was incomplete because we didn't have an, a comprehensive regulation in our framework, in our legal framework as to the homo parental families. And so having this, uh, approving this bill would have been opposite to the best interest of the child because it not deal with the restru restructuration of the affiliation actions and with the fact of having three or more uh, parents. This project, this bill is in the Commission of uh, Childhood in the Senate, and it has been proposed yesterday, but unfortunately that session was not held. And we would also like to say that this was the purpose of lots of parliamentary issues, taking into account what the Chilean administration filed and some issues are added which are not correct for the Chilean state. For instance, a regulation of surrogate maternity and reproduction and assisted reproduction techniques. These are things that are missing in that bill and that those are the observations that the Chilean state made from a technical point of view. We have already exhausted the time, please. Can we have your conclusion? Yes, just to close, I would like to say that the state of Chile has fostered the same-sex marriage and two persons of the same sex can marry and being sp spouses will be able to marry and will be prioritized to adopt and to the adoption bill, which is also fostered by this administration during the current administration 2014-2018. We will conclude this hearing, then I will reiterate once again the importance that if you have any written information that you can give me, you can do it in writing to the secretary. I will conclude this hearing. Have a nice lunch and a good weekend. Thank you. Greetings. Thank you. Bye-bye.